Hello everyone, my name is Alexandra and welcome to my channel. Today is a great day for starting something new, don't you think? And uh, collaboration with Victoria Designs is new for me. I'm very excited about it. In the tutorial that I'm going to share with you today, I will guide you through the process of creating a journal using a freshly released project pack from Victoria Designs. It is called uh, Discover the Woods. And if you are a paper crafter who enjoys nature, it will be just impossible for you to stay uh, indifferent to the graphics and the papers in this project pack. They're so beautiful. The pack includes six pages of uh, digital ephemera for fussy cutting, 24 journal pages, as well as um, eight uh, background dig digital papers. I don't have all of them um, here, but there are eight of them there. I used almost all of them in my journal. Um, so let's have a look at it together. On the cover, you see a cluster of digital um, fussy cut images. They're all included in your uh, project pack. This camera, for example, just bagged to turn into a shaker. And I uh, really like the vintage images of the binoculars and the owl and the bug here and the watercolor mushrooms and acorns. They are really beautiful. Then um, the label that I created here for the front is not included in your pack, but if you like it, you can easily download it from my blog. I will post the link to it in the description box down below. And you will also be able to find their link to Victoria Designs Etsy store in general and to the uh, Discover the Woods project pack in particular. So I used a piece of genuine leather for uh, creating the spine of my journal. And the covers are wrapped in muslin fabric. I printed one of the background uh, digital papers from the pack. Um, to the fabric and I'm going to show you in the tutorial how exactly I did that. Um, I chose to go with the ribbons for my closure. I just think it's the easiest and the most functional way to keep the journal closed. So yeah, let's finally have a look inside. So on the inside of the front cover, there is this um, folder pocket kind of thing. It is um, a quarter of an inch in depth. And um, yeah, I think it will easily hold some note cards, receipts or ephemera bits that um, you'd like to have there. I put together just a couple of journaling cards using the fussy cut elements in the pack. Um, so let me just show them to you. And I um, used some gold um, shimmering paint to add some splatters. I think it looks really nice here. So this card and this one and this one with the butterfly. So I added some uh, green paper here and there um, on the cards and just um, added a bit of stamping using the stamps from my stash. There is another, very plain on the back. And I printed all the um, pages with the fussy cut images to the 65 pounds uh, cardstock. And the rest of the pages are printed onto just simple um, copy paper. And on this card, I used this absolutely adorable squirrel. 
and I also added just a piece of leather that I had um, like it's a leftover piece from the spine and I secured it using the grommet on the card itself and added this cute acorn charm to it. These are the cards in this pocket. There are two signatures in this journal and they are attached to a hollow spine as you can see and then between the signatures there is this um, ephemera holder and everything you see in here is from the project pack it's so pretty so pretty all those tiny bits and pieces they're really great for um, using later in the journal once you start to actually write something in it then you can use these to add more to your pages create tucks and pockets and some accents on your pages okay so let me put these back and there are two more uh, cards in here and once again these are all the cards and bits from the fussy cut um, elements in the project bag okay so um, let's flip just through um, a couple more pages you can see that most of the pages have a very rich design and if you like me need more uh, journaling space you can print the designs on only one side of the paper and use the other side for writing so that's what I did so I have one spread with the design and the next spread for writing but of course there are pages that can be used for writing as well despite the fact that they have a digital design on them so on this one for example I could write only here but this page I could use almost completely for uh, writing something down um, okay so we have an ephemera folder here and here I created the stock for a magnifying glass and the pages are really beautiful I like the feel of them and the fact that I printed on a uh, tea dyed papers the colors uh, look a little bit more um, muted than they are in real life so if you will print on uh, white pages without tea dyeing them first um, the colors will be even more vibrant than here so um, yeah let's um, get to the uh, inside of the back cover now and um, there is an expandable uh, pocket here and it holds a few more journaling cards that I created using the um, elements from the, the project pack so there is one more of that camera and there is this card and this card and this one with a tuck and two little tags and there's one that looks like this and another one which is rather plain and one more with that adorable squirrel that we had before um, okay so this tutorial is very easy and definitely suitable for both um, beginners and advanced uh, crafters as one I will be very happy if you join me in the process of creating this journal using the discover the woods project pack from Victoria designs let's begin when I start to work on a journal 
and decide which pages I'm going to use. In case they are digital, I first print the digital pages out. And that helps me to identify the size of the page and correspondingly the size of the journal that I'm going to have. This page design was printed on the tea dyed uh, copy paper. You can see how um, slightly faded the colors look on this tea dyed paper. Prior to print printing it on the tea dyed paper, I printed it on the regular um, same a paper but white color, not treated with tea or anything like that. So you can see that the colors look absolutely different in both cases, although it is the same image, the same digital file that we're working with here. So that's just something to bear in mind and um, think which effect exactly you want to achieve. The next thing is if you want to print them on both sides or to have the print on one side only. In my journal that I'm going to show you how to make, I eventually decided to go with one side uh, printing option. I printed all the pages and then I had to, of course, trim the white borders. This page measures, when unfolded, nine and three quarters by seven and a half. That means that when you fold it in half and make sure to match the corners nicely, the size of the page when folded will be seven and a half by four and seven eighths. Now I knew how I wanted my signatures to look like and how to fold the pages. So I printed all together 22 sheets of digital designs from the Discover the Woods project pack and I separated them into two groups. Each group had 11 sheets and those 11 sheets I folded one page with the design fa facing out and the next page with the design facing in. And I kept on doing that and alternate the pages when I built the signatures. And this way, as you can see, you have one spread with the printed design that you can either use for further embellishing or for writing, if it's possible, like in this case. And the next spread you can use only for writing. Once I had the signatures folded, I could decide what will be the size of my journal covers. I like to make my covers just slightly bigger than the pages and that's why my covers will be seven and three quarters by five inches wide. These are the covers. Next we have to decide what will be the width of the spine. My journal will have two signatures, but also it will have a little insert in between those signatures. And I want to have something like a folder maybe to hold um, little pieces of ephemera on the back of the front a cover and also an expandable envelope on the back cover of my journal. So that's what we need to take into consideration when deciding how wide the spine of the journal needs to be. And we will get to this point a little bit later on in the video. I want 
to cover my journal with fabric and for the fabric to match the project pack that we are working with I needed to print certain designs on fabric by myself. I used some freezer paper. I bought freezer paper in a roll. This is how it looks. These are the measurements of the roll. I tear the necessary amount of paper that I need first and then I cut the paper sheets to the size of the um, eight and a half by 11 inches and that's because that's the size that I can fit into my printer and freezer paper if you have seen it before has one shiny side and one side is matte the fabric will be attached to the freezer paper on its shiny side so next once I have the freezer paper in the size that I want once again eight and a half by eleven I take a piece of fabric this is muslin and I trim the fabric to be slightly larger than the freezer paper sheet that's because after I attach the fabric to the freezer paper I will need to trim the edges and make two of those parts match one another as I mentioned before I take next the ironing board I put the fabric piece first then the freezer paper with the shiny side facing down and I use my iron to attach the fabric to the freezer paper and then I just keep on ironing it to the end making sure that I iron the edges good for trimming the edges you can use either a very sharp edge of a craft knife or a rotary cutter just like that so I take my ruler and I align it just at the edge of the freezer paper and then cut this fabric off and I do this for all the four sides to get this result so I have fabric on one side and the freezer paper on the other next to make sure that this sheet fabric sheet will feed nicely into my printer I take some washi tape and attach it on the short side of the fabric sheet like that and I fold it here and this way I know that this edge of the paper is securely connected together and will not separate when I feed it into my printer so I just cut off the edges of the washi tape and this now is ready to be printed on so let's move to the printer this is my printer it is the HP color laser jet pro 
M255 DW. I will use this feeder right here and carefully feed my paper into the slot. Next we need to choose the design that we want to print. And this is the design that I want to have printed onto my fabric sheet. So I'm going to print and then yes I want to print it in portrait orientation to make one copy of it. That's the size of the paper that I fed into my printer. I'm going with the full page and I'm using the fill page option and I hit print you can see that it folded here the page folded but that's fine I don't know what happened it always happens when you film a tutorial <laughs> something goes wrong right but that is fine we will not use that corner I have these ones printed nicely and this one I planned to cut to little squares anyways I'm sure you got the idea of how exactly to do that next we can just separate the freezer paper and the fabric and it's very easy to do you just peel off the fabric and you can see that the ink bled to the freezer paper as well here we have our Victoria designs fabric that we can further on use for creating our journal this is so cool right I love it I even like this effect <laughs> Of a folded page it looks interesting now I can decide which pages I want which fabrics to be correct I want to use on my front and on my back cover and I think I will go with two of these I want to use leather for the spine of my journal that's why I will now cover both of the chipboard pieces for the front and for the back of my journal with fabric and then I will work on the spine. I use glue stick for adhering the fabric to the chipboard and since I have a large surface here to cover with glue this jumbo glue stick is absolutely perfect I make sure that I cover the edges with glue gonna see against the light if I covered them with glue all over and then I will put my fabric, I will put my chipboard on fabric so that I have about half an inch border all around. So let's burnish. Next we need to trim the excess fabric and for doing that I use a template you can use your ruler that's fine I just like to leave about three quarters of an inch from all the sides of the cover and that's why I have the template right here you can use your rulers as well this one is about one inch wide that's fine too just my personal preference to use the three quarters 
of an inch template. So I do it like that. And like that. And the same thing on the second cover. We can use the scraps in our project as well. I still don't know where and how, but of course I'm keeping those. Next we need to trim the corners and wrap our covers. I'm using this corner mitering tool for trimming the corners of my fabric. I will not stop specifically on that tool, but if you search mitering tool on either Etsy or eBay, I'm sure you will be able to find something. The thing is that once you trim your corners, you need to have about one eighth of an inch from the corner of the chipboard to the edge of the fabric. And that's because we want the corners of the chipboard to be covered with fabric and not to show. Let me trim the second piece. Now I can use smaller glue stick to adhere the edges of the fabric to the chipboard cover. I kind of pull the fabric towards the inside of the chipboard page and remove the threads on the way if there are any threads fraying. Okay. Now let's add some glue here in the corners and then to the chipboard again and fold this edge in. Now you will see that in the corners you might want to tuck them more to the inside just like that. And that's the corner that we want to have here. Same thing from this side. I add more glue to the corners first. And then I add the glue to the chipboard and fold the fabric. Okay, that's our first piece. And that will be the back cover of our journal. Let me do the same for the front cover and get back to you. The covers are ready and now we can work on the spine. That's the time to decide how wide the spine of our journal needs to be. So my calculations are like this. I hope this makes sense to all of you. So I decided that I will have two of my signatures right here. Let me guide you through this, okay? In the middle between the signatures, I will have an insert for holding ephemera. So that means that the distance between the signatures and the insert, in my case, will be 3 eighths of an inch. And then I will have about a quarter of an inch from each side and that's because I want to add as I mentioned previously 
um, something like a folder on the back of the front cover and an envelope on the back cover to hold some additional notes. So we have 3 eighths, 3 eighths, and here another half an inch. All together, my spine should be one and a quarter. Then I want to add one eighth of an inch from the left and from the right. And that's for the thickness of the leather that I'm going to use and for the thickness of the chipboard so that when the journal is folded, we have a nice fold and no crinkling. So the leather together with the chipboard is about an eighth of an inch in thickness. And then I want my leather piece to uh, reach about three quarters of an inch away from the edge of the cover. So I added three quarters of an inch from the left and from the right side to my measurements. And that gave me three inches in total. So my leather piece for the spine needs to be three inches by seven and three quarters. And this is what I have right here. I will be gluing the leather piece to the covers using some strong glue to know where exactly I need to glue the leather piece on the cover. I drew a guideline on the front cover as well as on the back cover and this guideline is three quarters of an inch away from the um, edge of the cover itself. Well, now let's glue our spine piece to the covers. That's the glue that I want to use today. Didn't let me down so far. Okay, so I will be applying, I think you, you can use Beacon Fabric Tack as well. I will be applying glue right here. I think I might have applied too much. Okay, so I will just spread it. Make sure that I have enough glue in the corners. Okay, now let's align the leather with the guideline and gently press down without stretching the leather too much. Okay, perfect. Now we can do the same on the other side. Great. So strong glue, strong glue is great, but we want to make sure that the cover stays in place exactly where we want it to stay. And that's why I want to add some breads here along the edge of the leather piece. I will attach the breads about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the leather. I can now take my poking tool and mark one hole here in the center. Then I think I will have another hole about three eighths away from either of the sides and another one about let's say three quarters one and three quarters of an inch away from the central hole that's what we'll have let me tell you where the holes will be. So one of them will be at 3 eighths 
the second will be at 2 and 1 eighth, third 3 and 7 eighths, 5 and 5 eighths, and well, I have it here at 7 and a, uh, seven and a half, but I think 7 and 3 eighths is also fine. I think I moved my ruler just a little bit. Okay, so 7 and 3 eighths, the fifth hole. Now I have the holes marked and I will just reinforce them with the poking tool and then add the brads in there. And now the brads are set in place and that's how our cover looks like right now. Let's just put the pages in to see how it looks. I like it. That's when I like to use Distress Ink and distress the edges of the cover just a bit. And the same on the inside of the cover. Our signatures will have to be, of course, attached to something. And we will have a hollow, hollow spine. That's why we will take a piece of the craft cardstock next. That's what I like to use in my journals. I'll take this piece and it is the same height as the pages, seven and a half inches long. And the width of it is three and three quarters of an inch. I scored it at one and a quarter on each side, left and right, and then I scored the uh, space in between those two score lines at every eighth of an inch. And that's because I want my spine to curve easier. Now on the back of this piece, I want to mark the places for um, the holes to be and to those uh, in those places we will stitch our pages. I will be using three holes pamphlet stitch for sewing my signatures in and the holes will be in every signature at one inch three and three quarters and six and a half inches. That's my template. So I will just transfer those marks to the back of the spine that I'm going to sew my signatures to. Now I will connect those marks. I will then mark the center of this piece and I have there a scored line to help me but if you can't see it right here because of the lighting it is at one and seven eighths there and then back to the measurements that we made before we need to have three eighths of an inch away from each from the center for each one of our signatures so I will also mark those places connect the marks And now I can see where exactly I need to poke the holes for the signatures. Right here. I marked them. And now I can use my poking tool and poke them. 
Okay. So let me go ahead and do that. Here they are, our holes. Next, I will take another piece of muslin and to the side of this craft cardstock that will be positioned like this and then the signatures will go here to the front of our spinal piece I want to glue another piece of muslin and this one is about nine inches by three inches wide I will use my glue stick again to apply a generous amount of glue to the center of the spinal piece and also to the sides but you remember that our fabric doesn't reach the very edges of the paper piece so just don't apply too much glue it would be really nice to iron this piece again and then I will apply more glue here and fold this flap and the same thing we'll do with the second flap right here now we can sew the signatures in before doing that I just want to reinforce the holes to poke them once again so that I can see them from both sides of this piece Perfect. In the center, I will be adding the ephemera folder. So I'm not going to sew my signatures in there, but to the first row and to the third row, I will definitely sew my signatures. Now we need to poke the holes in this file of papers that we have so I'm holding them all together and place my template in in the center then I have this punching cradle that my husband made for me and I use it a lot you can poke the holes in any way which is convenient to you I know that some people use uh, dictionaries for doing that. Okay, so now I poked the holes and I think what will be good to do is to hold this pile together. So I will use some bulldog clips and that's just because I want to ensure that my holes stay where they are and this whole signature can be poked with the needle easily and that nothing moves so let's do one signature at a time we have this one ready this is the thread that I'm usually using it's an upholstery uh, thread it's very thick and I like how it proved itself um, until now so to know what's the length of the thread that I need I just fold it twice along the length the along the height of the pages and then add just a bit more to make sure that I have enough then I thread this thick needle and I use that bulldog clip 
to hold that piece of the thread. I start from the central hole and I go from the inside of the signature pile to the outside. Then I go through the central hole in the spine. Then I put it from the outside of the spinal piece and through the outside of the signature pile to the inside. Then I go again to the middle hole and from the outside of the third hole in the spine through the outside of the third hole in the signatures to the inside then I go through the central hole again wind my thread around like so go back into that same hole like this remove the needle lightly pull by the threads to make sure that they are nice and tight and tie a knot. And you can trim the excess thread like so. Our first signature is attached to the spine. Now we can do the same with the second signature. I will not film the process and it will be the same as for the first signature and I will sew this signature to the third row of holes on the spine. And our second signature is in place as well. Already starts to take shape. I love the pages. Let's quickly flip through the pages. Look at that. So nice. And I like how vintage images blend here really well with some uh, modern watercolors. Really great imagery here. Oh, wow. So inspiring. Do you remember how we scored those lines at one and a quarter of an inch away from the sides of the spinal of the spine paper piece? That's what we need to take into consideration now when gluing the signatures down to the cover of our journal you will need to draw guidelines on the cover one and one eighth of an inch away from the chipboard edge. Here I have that line and I have another line like right here so that will help you see where exactly your spinal piece will have to be glued down to the cover of the journal. And of course you will do that only once you have the ephemera folder attached to the middle row of the holes on the spine. Let's create that ephemera holder now. I will be using this green cardstock for creating my ephemera holder. The size of this 
cardstock piece is 10 inches by seven and a half. I scored it at five inches and then I added two score lines. One was at four and seven eighths and the second one was at five and one eighth. And I will explain why later on. Next we will need four pieces of either tracing paper or vellum for the pockets. And these measure four and seven eighths by two inches. I will be gluing them down to the cardstock piece. I will use just plain liquid glue. I will take one of the tracing paper pieces and apply glue to three sides of this piece close to the edge and then I will align this with the bottom of my future ephemera holder and that will make sure that I have everything straight if there is any overhanging of the tracing paper which might happen just trim it down and do the same with another piece on the right side of the folder like this to know where exactly to adhere the second pair of the tracing paper pieces I will mark at two inches right here from the edge of the first tracing paper piece and now I will know where exactly I need to start adhering the next piece so the same thing I apply glue along the three edges of the tracing paper like that. I match the corner of the tracing paper with that mark that we made a second ago and I make sure that I glue it down straight along the edge of the green cardstock. We have another pocket here and the same thing on this side. I will make a mark two inches away from the top corner of the tracing paper pocket here. I will add glue to the tracing paper. Once again my glue doesn't cooperate. Okay, so we'll add some glue. And we will glue it down right here. Our pockets are ready. Let's trim the excess of the tracing paper here. Okay. We can now embellish our ephemera holder with some more of the beautiful papers from the pack and these will measure seven and a quarter by four and five eighths. So I will glue them down right now and I want to add a little fabric tab here on top so I will glue it down first and then I will add the paper on top. This is what we have so far. I will use my template to poke the holes since it's only one sheet I'm not clipping it to the signature with the bulldog clips I'm just holding it okay now in the same way that we stitched the signatures down to the spine I will 
stitched this signature. And now it's in, sewn like that, and ready to hold some ephemera pieces from the pack. I have cut out some of the elements here. So a few of those cards I think we can put inside. Let me just have a look at it. So we have these nice cards with the birds that we can put in and we have two of these ones and a bigger one like that. And some really nice rope bridge wedge tent. Oh, this is cute. I will put it in here. And there are some more. Let's see what I want to put in here. Another bird. And hmm, let's transfer these in here and take some additional ones. I really like these ones with the bugs and this vintage looking card. So we can put it here and this one can go in here. Great! So that's what we have so far. We can also add some of the die cuts. We can glue them down to the tracing paper pockets just for some added interest. I like this piece. It's kind of a washi tape that we could use. Well, we'll use it somewhere else. Let's see, we can add a butterfly in here. Well, we'll get to this later on. Let's glue the spine and the signatures down to our cover right now. And keep on working on embellishing the pages later. Okay? What do you say? Okay, so I really like how this comes together. We will take our cover and apply enough glue to the flap right here. I like to put some paper to make sure that I'm not messing the pages with the glue. Okay, so this is just tacky glue that I'm using here. And I need to say that it holds fabric and paper really nice together. I'm using it for about seven, eight years now. And I have never had any problems with any of my albums or journals that I made before. Okay, so we just have to align this piece along the guideline that we have and leave about one eighth of an inch from the top and the bottom. Now let's go to this side and do the same. I will apply the glue and then use the guideline to glue the flap down to the cover. Before uh, closing the journal, I like to leave it open for like 10 or 15 minutes to make sure that the glue dries enough. And once the glue is dry, we can go ahead and close the journal, fold our cover. You might want to work out the spine just a little bit to make sure that it curves nicely. But that's what we have so far. Okay. 
we can now work on the additional pieces that we wanted to add to the covers.